Hello, call me YJ. I'm a Google Certified Innovator, Trainer, and GG Leader from Singapore. For today, I'm going to answer how to save time when grading assessments in Google Classroom. Why do it? Given the number of hours most teachers dedicate to evaluating how well students learn and the direct implications on impacting students' immediate futures, wouldn't it be nice to have technology save time and take over certain duties from the humans instead? There are several prerequisites for assessments to be effective. Firstly, the mode has to be targeted. Second, feedback has to be specific and prompt. And finally, the system has to be intuitive such that feedback and work items are easily accessible to be acted upon. So, what's the best way to do justice to your students while also not overextending yourself? In this video, we will talk about several things including cross-referencing grades, streamlining workflow as well as various assessment modes and the return or shortcuts. When it comes to grading, I'm pretty sure all teachers in every part of the world have some sort of a grade book or learning management system where results have to be reflected. However, this grade book may sort students in your class in a totally different manner. This makes data entry work rather tedious if the arrangement in Google Classroom does not match the real call register that you have. In this example, my spreadsheet has students in my demo classroom listed alphabetically. So, what could you do? If you look at this demo classroom here, there's a drop-down box here with three options. Sort by status, by first name, or by surname. Choose the option that matches your school's sorting system, and instead of cross-referencing each student's grades, the arrangement is more fluid now. When all marks have been entered, click the gear wheel icon on the top right-hand corner here. Observe that you have options to copy all marks into Google Sheets, or download marks as commerce separated value files. Now, these files are ready to be migrated to your school's learning management system or printed out for your gradebooks. Moving on, you will want to tackle the absolute number of submissions next. Take a look here again. I have 9 students with 1 submission and 8 non-submissions. How might we save time in such a situation? We get the non-submissions out of the way first. I first select all the non-submissions. Notice how the envelope icon lights up once I've done so. This means I have the option to email all at once to notify them of their missed submissions. Now, what if I wish to see which assignments a specific student has already submitted? Let's click on Jay's name over here. Straight away, it reveals a list of assignments, including those assigned to him, those he has turned in, and others which he has missed. This is a quick and convenient way to follow up on a student's submission history. And from the home page, there is an option to click on Marks or Grades. This gives an overall view of all submissions by all students with options to edit and to return to all with simply one click, which saves a lot of time. When editing, notice that for each assignment, the default score is 100. I can change that to a smaller number like 20 or 10 points. Watch how it can be done over here by simply clicking on the point value option and editing the numbers as such. When I change the point value to unmarked, I'm no longer able to enter the marks. But I can still give private comments to each student, such as the same message to all to confirm receipt. In summary, here are our time-saving tips. Firstly, the sorting arrangement arranges students' names in a desired naming order, allowing quick result mapping to your school's learning management system. Next, the sort by status function sees out non-submissions and the private message email feature helps to remind students. Give specific deadlines to help both students and yourself better manage submissions and grading respectively. Finally, use the return all and editing features to return work quickly and personalize feedback. And there you have it, how to save time when grading. Thank you once again for watching this video.